In this section, we're going to talk about decision making, including risky decision making and neuroeconomics. There are two different types of uh, ways a problem can be presented to you. Uh, decisions depend on how choices are presented, and this is related to the status quo bias. So the status quo bias says we have a tendency to do nothing when faced with making a decision. Um, you might also hear this referred to um, as paralysis, right? Having a, a decision paralysis when you have a choice. Um, there's also some interesting information on the idea of the paradox of choice in that we want more choices, but when presented with more choices, we have more difficult time making a decision. So one example of this is the organ donation program. In the United States, this is an opt-in procedure, meaning that you must select into the program. You have to take an active step to become an organ donor when you're at the DMV, selecting that uh, as a checkbox before you order your license. In other countries, it is an opt-out procedure, and you are an organ donor unless you specifically request not to be. And the research shows that in the opt-out procedure, uh, there are significantly more organ donors in countries that have that procedure. Um, so again, that is an illustration of the status quo bias, that we have the tendency to do nothing if we have to choose to be an organ donor. With regard to risky decisions, um, below are two programs on the left in the orange and two programs in the blue on the right. And again, it matters how choices are stated to us. So the um, one on the left indicates this is stated in terms of gains, what we will gain. Um, so program A, 200 people will be saved, while program B, there's a one-third probability that 600 are saved but a two-thirds chance of no one being saved. So because it's stated in terms of gains, we don't want to take that risk. That's called risk aversion strategy. So people choose program A because there's a guaranteed 200 people will be saved. When the pro problem is stated differently, in program C, 400 people will die, and one-third probability that no one will die, people end up taking the risk. They say, I don't want to see 400 people die, therefore, I will choose the riskier option and hope that that one-third probability is the ultimate outcome. Um, so that is the difference between risk aversion and risk taking. There's another interesting decision-making effect called the framing effect, and again, about how decisions are stated. Um, the Tversky and Kahneman study um, was the actual illustration of the program A, B, C, and D. Um, so it is also called the framing effect. Neuroeconomics is a relatively new field and it is uh, designed to look at the brain activity while we are making decisions. Um, so we did talk about emotions and how emotions affect our decision making uh, in past classes. So this is one neuroeconomic study. Um, it was by Sanfi and co-workers in 2003. Uh, and there's uh, a game called the ultimatum game. So uh, there is a someone who presents the money and someone who uh, has to make a decision. So a person presents $10 and says, I will give you five dollars do you accept this decision and the other person who's the respondent has to either say yes i will accept or if they reject the decision no one gets the money so what's interesting was um, people uh, were less upset with a computer giving them these options than with a human so this is the illustration of that here when a um, a human offered them five dollars they accepted every time when a computer offered them five dollars they accepted every time again these are in person 
but look at what happens when uh, a human offers them only one dollar and they realize that the other person gets to keep the nine dollars even though it would benefit the person to accept whatever is offered even if it is only one dollar because they currently have zero dollars they would reject it more than half of the time because they felt it was unfair and the computer though they would only, they would reject it less than 50% of the time it was almost 70% of the time they would say sure I will take the dollar so what's interesting about this is that um, there is an activation of the right anterior insula um, and so that is in your temporal lobe and it's connected with emotional states um, so participants were more likely to reject the offers if there was emotion related to it uh, in that perception of fairness from a human being. So we know from neuroeconomics that emotion is important in decision making.